It was a day like any other in the Thraxian Bazaar, which is to say it was teeming with the usual assortment of creatures, smells, and noises that made it an assault on all five senses, and possibly a few others that humans hadn't quite categorized yet. Jack Vance, a man who once had the honor of being a captain in the human special forces, now found himself reduced to selling scraps and salvaged trinkets at a rickety little stall wedged between a vendor of suspiciously wiggling foodstuffs and a merchant hawking dubious miracle potions that were more likely to turn you inside out than cure any ailment. His stall, if it could even be dignified with such a term, was a ramshackle affair assembled from bits of old spacecraft hulls and whatever else he could scavenge. A tattered awning, once a vibrant shade of red, but now faded to a depressing pinkish grey, flapped lazily above him, offering scant protection from Thraxia's two blazing suns. Jack had been here for nearly a year, ever since the incident that had cost him his career, his dignity, and nearly his life. He didn't like to think about it, especially not on days like this, when the heat was unbearable and the memories of that fateful mission came rushing back unbidden. He had been ordered to neutralize a group of civilians suspected of harboring insurgents, but the intel was wrong, deadly wrong, and when he refused to fire on innocent people, his superiors had branded him a traitor. Now, instead of leading an elite unit, he was haggling over the price of corroded circuit boards with a species that communicated primarily through nasal humming. Fifty credits for this? Are you trying to rob me, human? The nasal humming vendor buzzed, holding up a rusty piece of metal that might have once been a part of a navigation system. Fifty credits is a steal, friend, Jack replied smoothly, though he knew full well it was junk. This here is a genuine piece from a Galactic Federation cruiser, a relic of a bygone era. You could sell it for three times that to the right collector. The alien vendor hummed skeptically, but Jack had perfected the art of looking confident while lying through his teeth. Finally, the alien grudgingly handed over the credits, muttering something that Jack was sure was not a compliment. As the vendor ambled off, Jack leaned back in his creaky chair, sighing heavily. The Thraxian Bazaar was no place for a washed-up soldier, but it was the only place he could disappear. Here, he was just another nobody in a galaxy full of nobodies. But as fate would have it, today wasn't going to be just another day. Out of the corner of his eye, Jack noticed a figure moving through the crowded marketplace. She was tall even by human standards, with a mane of shimmering indigo hair that cascaded down her back. Her clothes were tattered, clearly cobbled together from whatever she could find, but there was an undeniable grace in the way she moved. Beside her trotted a small child, no more than seven or eight years old, with the same indigo hair and wide, curious eyes, and trailing behind them was what appeared to be a pet of some sort, a creature that resembled a cat, if cats had three tails and fur that shifted colors with every step. Jack's curiosity was piqued, but he had learned long ago that curiosity was a dangerous thing in places like this. He was about to turn his attention back to his stall when he saw them, a group of hulking, heavily armed aliens with the look of bounty hunters about them. They moved with purpose, eyes locked on the woman and her child. Jack's instincts kicked in, the ones that had been drilled into him during his years in the Special Forces. He straightened in his chair, his hand moving reflexively to the concealed blaster at his side. The woman hadn't noticed the bounty hunters yet, but Jack could see the way they were closing in, forming a loose semicircle around her. Damn it, Jack muttered under his breath. He knew better than to get involved in other people's problems, especially in a place like this, but something about the look in the woman's eyes, the way she protectively held her child's hand, gnawed at him. He couldn't just sit there and do nothing. Before he could fully think it through, Jack was on his feet, moving toward the woman with long, purposeful strides. He reached her, just as the bounty hunters did, cutting in front of them with a disarming smile. There you are, love. I've been looking all over for you, Jack said loudly placing himself between the woman and the bounty. Hunters. 
The woman looked at him with a mixture of confusion and fear, but Jack gave her the slightest reassuring nod. Nice try, human, the lead bounty hunter growled, his voice a low rumble that matched his hulking armoured frame. His skin was a mottled green, covered in a sheen that made it look permanently slick with some kind of oily substance. He had a pair of small, beady eyes that were currently narrowed in suspicion. But this isn't your business. Step aside. Jack didn't budge. Sorry, but it is my business. That's my wife you're trying to haul off, and I'm not about to let that happen. The bounty hunters exchanged glances, then burst out laughing, a harsh, grating sound that drew the attention of a few nearby shoppers who wisely decided to keep their distance. Your wife, the leader spat, wiping a tear from one of his beady eyes. Do you think we're fools, human? This is Princess Velixia of the House of Zur and her little brat. Their kingdom wants them back, and there's a hefty reward for their return. Now unless you want to be dragged in for obstructing justice, I suggest you walk away before you lose more than just your pride. Jack's mind raced. Princess? A hefty reward? He had no idea who this woman was, but he was in too deep now to back out. Besides, something about the way the bounty hunters were leering at her and her child made his blood boil. He hadn't disobeyed orders and thrown away his career just to let thugs like these have their way. Well, if she's a princess, where's the royal entourage? Jack bluffed, making an exaggerated show of looking around. No guards? No pomp? Doesn't seem very regal to me. Maybe you've got the wrong woman. I heard that bounty hunters are nothing but a bunch of drunk bullies who can't even fight their way out of a wet paper bag. The bounty hunter's eyes narrowed further, and Jack could see the calculation behind them. This wasn't going to end with words. Jack's hand tightened around the grip of his concealed blaster. Enough games, you think you're funny human. Let's see how you do against us, the leader snarled, motioning to his comrades. Take them! The moment the bounty hunters moved... Jack struck. He drew his blaster in a fluid motion, firing two quick shots into the ground at the feet of the nearest hunters. The energy bolts sizzled through the air, forcing them to jump back. Run! Jack shouted to the woman, but she didn't need to be told twice. Grabbing her daughter's hand, she bolted down the nearest alleyway. The cat-like creature hissed and darted after them, its fur flashing an angry red. The bounty hunters were momentarily stunned, but their leader recovered quickly. After them, he barked. Two of the hunters broke off to chase the fleeing woman, while the leader and another turned their attention to Jack. Jack didn't wait for them to make the first move. He fired again, forcing them to duck behind a nearby stall. The bazaar erupted into chaos as vendors and shoppers scrambled to get out of the line of fire. Big mistake, human the leader growled as he peeked out from behind cover. He brandished a heavy blaster that made Jack's sidearm look like a pop gun. You're dead. You should have mind your own business. Not if I shoot you first, Jack retorted, but he knew he was outgunned. He needed to get out of the open, fast. He spotted a stack of crates to his left and dove behind them just as the bounty hunter opened fire. The crates exploded in a shower of splinters and metallic debris, but they provided enough cover for Jack to return fire. He aimed for the hunter's weapon, trying to disable it rather than kill the man. He wasn't a murderer, no matter how far he'd fallen, but these bounty hunters weren't giving him much of a choice. The shot went wide, but it was enough to force the hunter back. Jack used the brief lull to scramble to his feet and sprint after the woman. He had no idea where she was headed, but he couldn't let her face those bounty hunters alone. The narrow alleyways of the Thraxian Bazaar were a labyrinth, but Jack's military training kicked in. He navigated the twists and turns with ease, his senses heightened by the adrenaline coursing through his veins. He could hear the heavy footsteps of the bounty hunters behind him, but they were slower, weighed down by their bulky armor. Up ahead, he caught a glimpse of the woman and her daughter. They had reached a dead end, blocked by a towering wall of scrap metal and machinery. Stay back, 
I have this weapon, and I will use it if I have two, the woman shouted, her voice trembling with fear but also defiance. She held a small, ornate dagger in front of her, clearly an heirloom, rather than a weapon meant for real combat. Ha, ah, scared little princess, that would not even make a scratch. The child clung to her mother's leg, her wide eyes filled with terror. The cat-like creature hissed menacingly, its fur now a deep crimson, as it crouched, ready to pounce. Jack could see the desperation in the woman's eyes, the kind of desperation that comes when you've run out of options. But Jack wasn't about to let it end like this. Get down, Jack shouted, sprinting forward and firing a few more shots over the woman's shoulder. She hesitated for a split second, then dropped to the ground, pulling her daughter down with her. The cat-like creature darted to the side, its tails lashing angrily. Jack's shots slammed into the lead bounty hunter's blaster, sending it flying out of his hands with a shower of sparks. The hunter roared in frustration, but before he could react, Jack was on him, tackling him to the ground. They tumbled in the dirt, a chaotic flurry of fists and elbows. The other bounty hunter, the one who had not yet drawn a weapon, hesitated, clearly unsure whether to help his leader or go after the woman. That hesitation was all the opening the woman needed. She sprang to her feet, grabbed a loose piece of scrap metal from the ground, and smashed it over the second hunter's head. He staggered, dazed, and then collapsed in a heap. Jack, meanwhile, was struggling to keep the lead hunter's claws away from his throat. The alien was far stronger, and Jack knew that he wouldn't last long in a direct grapple, so he fought dirty. He jammed his knee into the hunter's midsection, then slammed his elbow into the side of his head. The alien grunted, momentarily stunned, and Jack used the opportunity to roll free and grab his blaster. He aimed it squarely at the hunter's chest. Don't move, Jack warned, breathing heavily. The bounty hunter seemed to consider his options, his beady eyes flicking between Jack's blaster and the unconscious form of his comrade. Finally, he raised his hands in a gesture of surrender, baring his teeth in what might have been a sneer or a grimace. This isn't over, human. You don't know the full scale of who you're messing with, he spat. Jack didn't lower his blaster. All talk, big boy, I don't scare easily. Now get out of here before I decide to end this permanently. The hunter glared at him for a long moment, then slowly got to his feet, his hands still raised. He cast a final, venomous look at the woman and her child, then turned and began dragging his unconscious comrade back down the alley. It took all of Jack's self-control not to shoot the retreating figure in the back, but he wasn't about to start a war in the middle of the bazaar. Not unless he absolutely had to. When they were finally out of sight, Jack let out a long breath, feeling the tension drain from his body. He turned to the woman, who was still clutching the piece of scrap metal, her knuckles white. The child was trembling, her wide eyes locked on Jack, as if trying to decide whether he was friend or foe. Are you okay? Jack asked, lowering his blaster and trying to sound as non-threatening as possible. The woman nodded slowly, but her eyes were still wary. Who are you? she asked, her voice laced with suspicion. Why did you help us? Jack holstered his blaster and offered her a hand. Name's Jack Vance, and as for why, well, let's just say I've got a thing about bullies. The woman studied him for a moment, then took his hand and allowed him to help her to her feet. Thank you, she said softly, her grip firm despite her obvious exhaustion. I'm Princess Velixia, yeah, I gathered, Jack said with a wry smile, though I gotta say, you don't exactly look like the royal type. Velixia's lips twitched in what might have been the ghost of a smile. I suppose that's the point, she replied, glancing down at her tattered clothes. I've been on the run for a long time. Jack raised an eyebrow. On the run? From who? From everyone, she said, her voice tinged with bitterness. My family, my enemies. They all want something from me. Power, wealth, a bargaining chip. It's the same old story. Thank you for helping. Most just put their head down and don't get involved. 
Glad to, it's in my nature we humans have a tendency to bite off more than we can chew. The princess stared at him for a short while, not getting the joke. Jack could see the weariness in her eyes, the kind that came from carrying too many burdens for too long. He'd seen that look before, in the mirror, on more occasions than he cared to remember. And the little one, Jack asked, nodding toward the girl, who was still clutching her mother's leg. Velixia's expression softened as she looked down at her daughter. This is Lyra. She's... she's all I have left. Jack knelt down to Lyra's level, offering her a warm smile. Hi, Lyra. 